Hey guys, today we're talking about whole slide imaging, a cutting edge technology in the field of pathology. Whole slide imaging or WSI is a process where microscopic slides containing tissue samples are digitized to produce high resolution virtual slides. Machine learning is changing the way healthcare professionals diagnose and treat diseases. And if there's a medical field in which this is particularly evident, it is digital pathology. Vision models can now detect diseases such as diabetic uh, or breast cancer with remarkable accuracy. AI is able to recognize subtle differences between normal and abnormal tissues. It can go through a sample and check every single cell for signs of cancer in a fraction of the time that a pathologist would need. AI models can also identify patterns in medical images that are too complex for the human eye to notice. We're going to see some of the tools that we can utilize with V7 to try to like annotate these uh, images. So I just jumped straight into V7. I'm going to sh show you how we can also annotate our whole slide imaging. So we're going to actually use this for doing detection of different cells like cancer cells, um, cells in general, and so on. Here we just have the different data sets. I'll just go into the beer market data sets to start with. Then we can see we have these SVS files, which is basically what V7 is using for um, actually like loading in our WSI files. So we have these high resolution images where we can zoom in. We can do our annotation on zoomed in images for all these different kind of like cells where we actually want to do um, segmentation of cells. We want to detect cancer cells and all those different kind of things. But basically, let's just open one of the files here and see how we can actually like label them with V7. So if you just scroll in here, we have these high resolution images. Right now it is just like fully zoomed out, but we can actually like zoom in. We can see that it just takes a second to render and then we get a really high quality image where we can go in and do the annotations. So this is basically like microscopic, uh, microscopic images. We have really high resolution and these are actually like some really large files. Um, so this is one of the good things about V7 as well. We can just upload these large files. V7 will take care of all of it. We can basically just zoom in and out as we want to. We can play around with it. It will render fast and then we can act like annotate our images. So here, if we were to just annotate all the cells that we have in the image, it will take up a lot of time. But we can act like just have some initial labeling. We can train our own model for act like segmenting out these cells if you want to do that or if you just want to do optic detection. We can also assign labels and attributes to all of the instances that we're going to label. Uh, or we can just have cell, not cell. We just want to detect cells and so on. Then we can basically train a model. I'm going to show you how we can set up the workflow for that. We can have some consensus and review stages as well. So we make sure that we have the best label data as possible because this is actually like really life changing uh, models. These models here are actually like solving healthcare problems. So we're going to alternate these cells here, train a model, and then we can do this also labeling technique where we basically just label all the cells in our WSI files. So first of all here, I'll just zoom in a bit and then we can go up and take the auto annotation tool. Then I'll basically just go down, find the cell that we want to label or like annotate. We just draw this boundary box here. Then we can choose to, to select the class that we want. First of all, we're just going to go with the cell and then it will figure that out afterwards. Then we can basically just go in draw a bounding box around all the cells that we want to annotate and we can just keep doing that. When we have enough data, we can go in, train our model, run our model here in V7 and then we can basically just have new data, feed it into the model. It can do auto labeling on the whole VSI image. So this is actually like a really awesome feature that can save you a lot of time. Just imagine sitting here labeling all these cells individually, train a model with an initial data set and then just throw in these VSI files. Um, and then you get like whole annotated images. You can have different review stages and so on to make sure that your images are actually like annotated correctly. Again here, I'm just going to go through a couple of examples uh, just to see how it works. So here we're just rerunning it. We'll go up and use the same tool. Again, we just draw a bounding box around it, all the cells that we want to detect. We can also go in and assign attributes to all of our individual cells. Uh, so we can go and click to add an attribute over here to the right. We basically just hit click to attribute. We can add an attribute if you want to uh, classify specific cells or whatever we want to do with our models. Sometimes you just want to like detect cells in your images so you can go in and analyze them even further. 
But if you have some images where you want to detect, for example, lung cancer, then we can actually go in and train our models to predict these things, go in, analyze it. It can go through like hundreds of images compared to like a pathologist, which can only go through like a couple of images. Uh, it takes some time. There's also going to be some errors if you just have like human looking at these images, of course, the AI won't be perfect. But again, if the AI is supervised by the human, it will act like increased efficiency, but also the accuracy significantly for these models. And this is really life changing in these problems for healthcare problems, where we actually want to have our models detect um, different kind of like diseases, breast cancer, cancer in different types of cells and so on. So here I'm just going to annotate a couple of examples. I'm just going to let it run. Then we're going to see how we can create these workflow with the consensus stages and so on, because this acts like a really um, hard problem to solve and it will require a lot of time and resources to label these images and actually like have a working model at the end. But this can also be life changing at the end as well. So here I want to show you that we are down on a microscopic level and right now I'm just going to zoom out to, to show you guys the scale that we're actually working on. So this is an individual cell that we probably want to segment out or at least detect. Now I'm just going to zoom out and then we can actually like see the scale in these WSI images and this is actually like really large files that we can work with um, with V7. Again, we can just keep on scrolling out. It will render the image. We can still see that we get really high quality. So let's just say that this is probably like, if we just said that this was an HD image and we want to zoom in, then if we just zoom in to like this level, we will just lose like all our resolution. But here we can see that this is actually like really high resolution medical images on a microscopic level. And then we can actually like use it in the healthcare sector for uh, different like disease detections, analysis, and all those different kind of things. So now we're going to show you how we can create a workflow. We basically just hit the create workflow button up here at the top. So here we can see the basic workflow that we have. First of all, we have our data set. We can connect the data set that we have just labeled. Then we have an annotation state. We basically already had that. Uh, and then we can have different review stages, consensus stages. We can also take a model over here to the right. So if you just drag, drag and drop our model in here, we can basically just connect our data set to our trained AI model. We throw in our VSI files through the model, then we can auto label with this trained AI model all the cells that we have in our images. And then after that, we're just going to delete our annotation state. After our model has done the predictions on our data set, we just take the output from our model, we throw it into a review stage. If they get, get accepted, then we can act like just throw them into our complete data set. Here you can have different review stages. You can also have like um, a review stage in the beginning where you just have like standard pathologist doing review if they're accepting the labels and so on. Then if they are reviewed and they are accepted, you can throw it into another stage where more advanced senior pathologists can go into the review stage, accept them. And only if they accept them, it will go into the complete data set because there's actually like a lot of different ways to label these data sets also depending on, on the pathologist. So there is actually like a lot of variation when these pathologists are labeling these images. So it's good to have these review stages. You can also set up a consensus state where where different people act like go in and label them, then it will check on the intersection over the union. If these labels act like match, if they match over an, a threshold value, then it will be accepted because then they agree on the label and then it will be accepted, throw it into review stage. If they get, get accepted in the review stage, we throw it into the complete data set. If they disagree in the consensus state, probably just discard them or refer into another labeling team with more expertise or go through review stage with senior pathologists. So this is basically like the workflow that you can set up. So this is also one of the cool tools with V7 is that we have these different stages that we can throw in and we can customize our whole pipeline to our specific needs and our team that is working on the data set. So we could maybe just have our AI model here. The output from our AI model will go into a consensus state where we have different stages inside of that. We can set up our threshold first of all, and then we can add stages. So we can both have an annotation and also a model. So here we can have an AI model. Then we can basically delete this one. Just throw this directly down into the consensus state. Inside of the consensus state, we can also go in and have like multiple, multiple ones. So we can also add another state. So we can have an annotation state. You can assign different people to this stage and then you basically just have all these labelers that you can assign to the task so if they agree so if the annotators agree with the AI model then 
If they agree, you basically just throw it into a review stage with some senior pathologist. If they accept that, it will go into the complete stage. If they disagree, again, you can either like reject reject them or you can throw it into like another review stage. Then you will basically just set up another review stage uh, where some other different kind of like people in the team can label them. We can also just throw it back here again, throw it into the model as you just saw. If I just go back again, we can basically just take the disagreements, throw them into it again. And then the AI model can do the predictions over again together with the annotators. And again, then you'll basically just have this loop. You can customize your own workflow for your specific needs. But one of the greatest things here with V7 is definitely that we can work with these large WSI files. We have really high resolution. We can zoom in, we can move around. So instead of having like hundreds of patches or like smaller images, you can basically just have these whole WSI files. You can throw them in to the A trained AI model, do auto labeling of all the cells that we have in the files, throw them into different review stages and so on. So this is a really cool tool and it can save you a ton of time if you're working with these uh, healthcare problems. It can also be like other different kind of like data sets. You can also do it for just PNG files. If you have a data set with some different like healthcare images in a problem that you want to solve, you can also use all the same steps here um, as we've been going through in this video. So it can be used for pretty much everything within the healthcare sector. And this is just a really cool tool that we have with V7. Then we can create these AI models that can solve healthcare problems, which will have a significant impact on society.